Couch Football Nerds, we are talking about the Iron Bowl album in Auburn. We do this one every year, even though Auburn's coming in a little maybe disappointed after the South Carolina loss. But we are going to remind y'all as we get into this in the comments, give us your Iron Bowl score prediction. Auburn fans, let us know what you think about Harson. We're going to get into that in a little in a little bit. Um, whether you not you want him for the long term, um, and like, subscribe, hit that notification bell helps us out a ton. And we will be talking about the Iron Bowl during our live show at ten o'clock Saturday night. You'll be full of leftover turkey, and you'll be ready to talk some football and the rest of the college football landscape for come forthcoming playoffs. So come and check us out live show ten p.m. Eastern. All right, Josh, um, I've noticed a lot of commentary from Auburn fans, and that's why I mentioned it in the open. They're frustrated with 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 the coaching direction and maybe after one year ready to make a change. And one, I don't think they can do that financially. It doesn't make sense. They're like one of the country's worst at paying former coaches, them in Florida, ironically. Um and they're going to be frustrated about losing to South Carolina. But Josh, is it fair to say that this coaching staff was doing a pretty good job until Bo Nix got hurt, and they don't it, they don't have the level of talent right now to sustain a loss at quarterback at a position they're not super great at in general um, to kind of rally around a backup. And it's less maybe about, a, about the, about the coaching and more about a cupboard being bare, giving zero margin for error for this coaching staff. I mean, that's kind of my take. And when we went into the year and we did the preview, right. For Penn state Auburn, I said, look, I don't think Auburn's a particularly good team. Um, and, I felt like it was a bit of a referendum or I said that about the big 10 because it's like, look, I, I think Auburn's going to finish maybe at best middle of the pack in the sec. And I want to see how you fare. And I think a lot of Auburn fans got upset with that. I mean, I'm dogging their team. Right. But hopefully maybe fans are willing to give me a little bit more credit when you get to the end of the year. And I'm not wrong. Like if I make a prediction that is negative to your team and your team links up to that prediction, that's not me hating on your team. Uh, that's me being good at what we're trying to do on this channel at saying where a team is or isn't. It's kind of crazy to me, honestly, when you look back at it, that Auburn won some of the games they did win and put themselves in a position to make a bowl, frankly. Because my perspective with Auburn was Malzahn left this cupboard extremely bare. Uh, they found ways to get production out of, like, Cedric Jackson, um, I don't think Hudson was available, if I remember right, against the South Carolina game, which was a big deal for them because I don't think the receiving core is an SEC caliber receiving core. Uh, they've got Tank Bixby, who's a good back. I think Jarquez Hunter has been a solid back. I think he's he shows some potential. He was definitely a diamond in the rough. I think maybe early in the year there was a little bit of an overreaction in seeing him as a top shelf back. I think he's good. He's an He's a real SEC back. But he's still a freshman, real SEC back. Bigsby is definitely the star. But when you get to this game and Bo Nix is out and Hudson doesn't get a reception and all you got is Bigsby, man, that's tough to win. Uh, 65 plays in this game. People talk about Bigsby not being featured enough. Of the 65 offensive snaps Auburn ran against South Carolina, Bigsby had 22 carries. And he also had a reception. So he was over a third of the touches in the game was just him by himself, 164 yards. I almost think you say he should have gotten more carries. Now I'll say he came out a lot because they'd run him five times in a row. That would how they'd be get down, how they'd manage to go down the field. And at some point he'd just be gassed. They pull him out and they immediately stall. And I, I think you give credit to Auburn for, and the coaching staff, for finding ways to win, like that Arkansas game was really impressive. They beat Ole Miss. They beat LSU. And honestly, I don't know that they really had the talent that they should have been able to do it. And they found ways to put it together. And they found a, you got to give a lot of credit to Harson for getting a lot more production out of Knicks than I think I'd seen or was expecting. But without him, when you reset that roster back to use a, a quarterback in Finley that isn't very good and hasn't been as developed – you get left with a the roster they are. And I on the offensive side of the ball, I'll be blunt, and maybe you can disagree with me, I don't think Auburn offensively was any better than South Carolina without Bo Nix. And I think you've got to credit the coaching staff 
just for getting them to be in a position where the South Carolina loss felt like a really brutal loss. Yeah, look, it's a road game. South Carolina is better than... They're better than the terrible that people want to give them credit. This is a team that murdered Florida a couple of weeks ago. Um, they had close losses against decent teams. Um, Kentucky beat them by six. They barely lost to Missouri, who's not great, but but good enough to beat Florida. Um, South Carolina is not a good football team, but when you're playing in that... 20 point stratosphere anybody can win we've said that for three three previews now this week um there's randomness at play and anybody could win i'm not killing auburn for that they gave up 21 points that's not that's not terrible like they had a good outing defensively it's a road game also by the way this is a former south carolina office and coordinator so there's a lot of knowledge about what auburn was going to do offensively in that in that stratosphere over there in Columbia. So I, I think that it was kind of a perfect storm for Auburn to lose and they still could have won. Um, I do hate that they went away from Bixby. They should have ridden him as much as possible because Finley, I don't think is the answer we've seen at quarterback. And unfortunately that's what they've got for the rest of the year. Um, but I think that maybe Auburn fans can see that the clamoring for him after what he showed in Georgia state is, is not, is not really the answer. Um, on the flip side, Josh, we talked about in our Arkansas Alabama preview. I said, okay, are we going to see if Alabama is good enough to adjust? They weren't good enough to adjust against LSU in game to expose a heavy blitz team. And if Arkansas, like this game would be very telling about their offense. If Arkansas was, blitzing a lot and Alabama could withstand that and and show something offensively. I think they did that because Arkansas did blitz a lot and Alabama had something ready for them and they were even able to run the ball pretty well, which they haven't been doing super great this year. So I'm really, if I'm an Alabama fan, I'm really encouraged by that offense, right? Um, But now one step forward, two steps back with the defense. So Josh, is, is this Arkansas game reflective of who Alabama is in that LSU, the defense shows up, at Arkansas, the offense shows up, and it's just that they've got this elite team on both sides of the ball, but other than Mississippi State and Ole Miss, they've not put it together, and, and that maybe at any given point they could put it together, but right now they are who they are, and that means they're not going to put it together in any random game. I mean, it sounds like it kind of is, right? And look, there's a lot to unpack in that game. And I talked about, to me, it was more about seeing where Alabama's offense was going to be. I didn't think Arkansas's offense was going to be that effective. And to be fair, right, there was a fake field goal touchdown scored. There was uh, a couple busted coverages. It's a lot like their Tennessee game was, where the, the points weren't coming through a lot of traditional drives or at least consistently. And they scored Arkansas scored 14 points in the first seven possessions. Um, So it kind of a little bit was just the play count started to snowball. And I think at that some point when Arkansas realized they were in it coming after the half, um, you know, they, they kind of got momentum, whatever. And it felt like there was sort of a slide, a lot like the Florida game was right where Alabama didn't really step on the throat. Um, But I think, to me, there might be almost more of a positive in what the offense showed because the fact that you give up 35 points to Arkansas doesn't matter other than the fact that you have that 35 uh, next to the score in a game that you won. Um, What you needed to get out of that game if you were Alabama, what I've been wondering if we were ever going to see from them, was a vertical passing game. Was Alabama ever going to find the ability to hit vertical shots on single coverage? Because what I saw in the LSU game was an LSU team that was playing cover zero. They were saying, all right, we're going to, we're just going to sit here. We're going to sit like 10 yards back, try to catch everything underneath. And Alabama did not exploit it. Uh, LSU was crashing constantly and they actually were giving guys a lot of uh, ability to get behind them. And, And Alabama had, I don't know, like four or five opportunities in that game when I was just watching it casually where it's like, man, okay, if they, if they let the ball rip right now and there'd be pressure and it would be coming, but it's like, they're even. And, and there's a, phrase in football if if they're even they're leaving if the wide receiver gets even with the corner or the safety you you let it rip because he's probably going to blow by him because the corner has to turn and run and he's not going to be able to do it 
The thing Alabama did in that Arkansas game in the second half especially is Bryce Young got the confidence to throw the ball when his guy was even. The double coverage touchdown to Jamison Williams was impressive. And then there were a couple late throws, like one long seam to Bolden, and then another throw, I believe, to Jamison where he was blowing, you know, even with a guy when it was thrown, where he was anticipating his receiver coming open without having to wait to see him open. That is the thing Bryce Young has not been doing. He's been, I think, a little nervous or overcautious. And if he gets confidence coming out of that game, even though he took a stupid sack that took points off the board, made some other mistakes, that's the thing that's going to let them be the team they need to be to be able to win a championship. And so the question now, of course, is they're going into an Auburn game where Auburn lost to South Carolina, but they didn't really lose because of their defense. Their defense played solid. They only gave up 21 points in that game. You know, 3.6 yards per carry. I know it was 10.5 yards per attempt, but only 157 yards passing total. Um, can they continue that production against an Auburn team that is, I think, definitely a better defense than Arkansas is on the whole? And you know what's funny is C.J. Stroud had this monster game against Michigan State, um, who is a really bad pass defense with two first-round wide receivers. Probably, you know, they might have another first-rounder in there on, on that loaded roster. And then Trevion Anderson, like – wealth of talent around him and he threw for I think I think 12 yards per attempt it might have been 11 Bryce Young against a better Arkansas defense threw for 14 yards per attempt and 500 and something yards and they definitely don't win without him um so if we're talking Heisman Bryce Young's best like most productive receiver is the guy that wasn't getting on the field at Ohio State um and he's got patchwork offensive line and he's got one good running back to work with. Bryce Young, like, I still don't think he's the best player on his team. But if we're talking about him versus C.J. Stroud, look, the the numbers are clear to me that Bryce Young gets the Heisman, in my opinion. Look, here's the other thing. Everybody wants to say, well, you can't say Mac Jones or Joe Burrow. They had all this talent around them, but they still won the Heisman, and rightly so. Yes, but they far outpaced everybody else in terms of statistical production. C.J. Stroud hasn't separated himself from Bryce Young, and Bryce Young has inferior uh, talent around him, and he's playing better teams. So that's just that. Maybe that's another show for another day. But I wanted to get that in there. Okay, Josh. Um, in this game, and this is what I, I think is interesting, um, where we kind of felt like Arkansas wasn't going to score a lot, but they were going to score some, and they could do some things um, offensively to give Alabama trouble. <clears throat> is this a situation, and maybe this is a time to get in the model, but I also want you to touch on matchups. Is this a situation where it might be that no matter how good Auburn's defense is, the matchup versus this Alabama defense, who does have some warts, is so bad that it won't matter because they're going to give Alabama a lot of short fields, and it's just a really bad matchup for Auburn where they might be able to do better against even another good ranked team. I mean, that's definitely the feel to it. Uh, and, you know, I'll start with a model since you're probably going to put it up on the screen anyway, right? Uh, and I, I'm not blaming you for that. The The model looks at a lot of different things. And one of the things it looks at is a opponent percentage of opponent averages allowed, right? And neither one of these teams is particularly impressive in pass defense at this point. Auburn is allowing teams 99% of their opponent passing averages Alabama is allowing teams 94%. And I don't think it should shock Alabama fans that our model just is not impressed with the way that Alabama is playing pass defense right now. But I think one of the more underrated aspects is even in their struggles, Alabama is one of the better run defenses nationally. 69% of opponent rushing averages, where Auburn is at 92%. I mean, they, they felt the effect of transfers and graduation. They are not as big and physical up front as they have been in recent years. Um, and so I think from a matchup perspective, that causes real problems. Uh, and you know, Auburn is 100% reliant on the run. There are a couple things that are coming together there. The South Carolina game, not only are they relying on the run, but I mean, there, there was a problem where they had multiple guys out, uh, or banged up and I'm not sure how healthy they are or not going to be in the Alabama game, but you go from 4.7 yards per Gary on your season average to about 3.2 predicted. 
and you go from only 6.9 yards per attempt to 6.5. And the problem here is that's with Knicks, and I'm not sure Finley is as good as Knicks. So even though Alabama, they're almost a 10-yard per attempt team now, 4.2 yards per carry, maybe you hold their run game to about 4 yards a carry or under, but 9.7 yards per attempt is a lot. You're still looking at like 7 yards per play, 5 yards per play, but in, in a janky fashion is what you're seeing. No run game from Auburn. Uh, really having to rely on the pass. And it's got this 42-15. Now, last week, the model did have Alabama winning actually 40-7 to versus Arkansas. Um, obviously, that was wrong. Now, we can go into a lot with that with Arkansas. There's, there's something to be considered that Arkansas has had games where they were really off, right? Like, they, K.J. Jefferson got hurt early in the year, uh, right before the Georgia game. And when he was injured, that offense was really sputtering and I'm not sure like if they had scored and this is kind of the weird way variability works in our model. If they'd scored just 10 points in Georgia, the model actually would have had it 40 to 20 Alabama over Arkansas. That's how much the total shutout against Georgia kind of skewed things because it lowered the floor. And I'm not sure that was really fair. And I probably didn't appreciate it based off how much the injury to Jefferson really limited that offense. But in this game, it's sort of sliding the other way. Uh, You don't have a starting quarterback. You have a banged-up offensive line. And I think Auburn has been a different team when they're running Bigsby versus everything else they do offensively. Running Bigsby, they are good, or they have been pretty good. Bigsby is a very effective back. The offensive line is at least very experienced. They get enough for Bigsby to go, and Bigsby makes things happen. Outside of him, it's all just a compliment. And the only times they've been particularly good was when Bo Nix was running around and creating and buying time that eventually somebody found themselves open. Coming into this game, beat up, injured, and in a matchup where Alabama, for all their faults, even in the Arkansas game, did not have any issues stopping the run, is going to make it hard because Bixby's probably not going to be able to carry the offense against this Alabama defense and how they're built. Um, And then Alabama on the other side is able to score a lot. And if Auburn gets in a situation where they have to throw to score, man, there's a potential for this game to get pretty ugly. And unfortunately for Auburn, I think it will. Um, I think there's a couple of things at play right now. One, Alabama absolutely still needs to tune up their offense for Georgia. So they're going to be working on some things like we've seen since the LSU game with intent and verticality, with intent on – shoring up the things they're not good at while continuing to do the things that they are. And I don't think, I do think that this Alabama defense can obviously be scored on. We just saw that with, with Arkansas, the matchup's not right. And so I think that this, even on the road, I think that Auburn's got a little bit of a deflation thing going on. They've lost three in a row. Um, Give me, Alabama 41, Auburn 10. Tell me what you got. Look, Alabama has not given up three yards per carry in a game since the A&M game. And that's kind of crazy. Even the Arkansas game, 42-35, Arkansas had 2.6 yards per carry. It was 110 yards, but it was on 42 carries. Uh, they held Mississippi State, who's not – I don't know they don't run much – they held them to negative one yards. Um, it's not the team Auburn wants to play. And the thing that they've been bad at is the defense tends to bust and let guys get behind them. There have been injuries have been involved with that. They had, I think, the safety Helms went down injured at one point. Uh, Job has been playing with turf toe, and he just couldn't handle Burks. It was pretty obvious, and they ended up having to switch him for a true freshman in McKinstry. Josh, let me interrupt you here and give you an opportunity to – get at some Bama fans who have been on DJ Dale's butt for a, quite a while now. And he was out in that game and we saw what happened. And I can't imagine that anybody was saying, Oh, DJ Dale was out and look how good we were. So I think there's an opportunity there for maybe you to say. Yeah. They, I mean, when you look at Alabama, it seems like they always have somebody out of the lineup and it always hurts them. And the, the funny thing is Alabama fans, seem to have this obsession with backup players lately. And I don't know why, uh, offensive line was one, you know, they lose, they, then they get a center 
gets hurt, they shuffle guys around, and they want to make a lot of excuses for the fact that they weren't very good in pass protection when they had backups in. I think George is turning the corner now at right tackle. I didn't think he necessarily looked that much better, but on the defensive side of the ball, DJ Dale for like, what, like three years now we've had this conversation with Alabama fans. They hate the guy. And, and the thing is, DJ Dale for Alabama is a two-gap defensive lineman. That means they use him in the middle to try to eat up two blockers. He's a big guy. He's got a strong lower body, and he knows how to play his lanes so that he – basically, he's not getting any push, but what he is doing is he's in a position where he can play either side of the lineman, even if he's one or two yards downfield, and that lets the linebackers roam free. Um Alabama fans have been, you know, like Ebba Wigby or Tim Smith or all these guys they have as backups. They've been sort of obsessed with them because they flash when they come in and they make a disruptive play. But they do that because they're constantly trying to go around a guy. And if you're going around a guy, you're playing a one gap. That means you're shooting a gap and you're leaving the other gap open. And especially early in the game and at very various points in the game, that let Jefferson run free, that let them get some decent runs, and they just aren't as good. And at the very least... If DJ Dale was the guy that needed to come off the field, it is hard to look at the way that game went defensively against a team that threw for a lot and feel like they were a better team without DJ Dale. Um, and I certainly think they felt the hit from a depth perspective. So it's a lot like, you know, Alabama and Auburn both have been greatly affected by injury. I'm not sure how much that matters, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> DJ Dale is a good example of how much, you know, they may be maligned guys. I know Alabama fans were all over Hellums. But, man, they're a lot better with Hellums than they are with have been the past couple of years with Wright. Uh, and my thing for Auburn in all this and to try to turn it back around in this game is there's all these problems that Alabama's had. And every time anyone misses a game, right, they had a third string outside linebacker in the Texas A&M game. They struggle. A&M really burned Daniel Turner in his first start by throwing the ball to wheel routes to running backs. A couple of the key conversions in that game that let them win – we're exploiting that. And, and they, they had built in rubs and all that kind of stuff, but they're exploiting a guy that had just been thrown in the lineup. Auburn with TJ Finley at quarterback isn't anywhere near as capable of exploiting those games. With Bo Nix, who was very experienced, who was very mobile, he's going to extend a play. He's a lot more likely to see the bust coming, and he's a lot more likely to pop that for points. And I would probably have Auburn scoring in the 20-something point range with Nix in the game. But with T.J. Finley, you lose that mobility. You lose what I think is a – I think there's a significant step back developmentally and in terms of field vision with Finley. And now, even if Alabama does bust, now, okay, they're busting, but they got a guy that can sit, that's having to sit in the pocket and that they can attack one-on-one, -on -one, and a lot of those advantages go away. So, to me, that's really the story of the game. I don't think it should shock Auburn fans at this point. I know they're pretty dejected. Um and, you know, like, man, you I, I'm sure there's a lot of hatred and criticism, right? Harson, that fourth and one from your own 30 decision, and then you do it with taking Bigsby off the field and throwing with Finley, you have every right to be mad about it. I will say, as much as I think that was an incredibly bad call, I also think it was a bad call that only loses you the game because you don't have a great roster around it. And I'll also say that's a call that doesn't work in large part because you don't have a quarterback at that point that is mobile or that is consistent enough to find a way to make a play. And that's the problem with Finley. He's the guy that overthrows a pass in that situation when he doesn't have to probably doesn't necessarily stick with the play. doesn't check out of the play, et cetera. Um, and for what they're trying to do, I think it just puts a really hard limiter in their ability to win this game. Now, I think all that, I didn't even give a score, right? So uh, my realistic score here, I will say it's 41 17. Um, I'm not sure that it, it might not be worse if Auburn is in we're going to try to win mode if the score gets that bad. I'm assuming the score is going to get bad and Auburn is going to try to basically play to keep it from getting worse. I'll be surprised if Auburn can put up more than 25 given how bad the matchups are against them. It, a run first team is not who you want to be to play Alabama this year given their, uh, their issues and they don't have a high efficiency quarterback. Um, and if they do that, I don't think Alabama is going to necessarily try to run the score up. But the one thing I'm really curious to see, again, just like Arkansas, can Alabama continue to show a vertical passing attack? Because that is the thing they absolutely have to have. And they need to have humming and at peak rhythm like 
some of the old Clemson teams that look like garbage for most of the year and they hit at the end of the season, if they want to make a playoff run, I think it's their only path to doing so. And it'll be curious to see how that turns out in the Iron Bowl. And right now, like it's it's disappointing as a college football fan because I wanted to see an Alabama team going into, you know, if Mississippi State and South Carolina go Auburn's way, this is this is an eight and three team that's ranked, and Alabama's going on the road. It would give us a better measure of quality. And even though Auburn's defense is good, the the offensive struggles are going to mean that. Auburn's eventually just going to break. And, and, you know, even even in the game we saw Saturday with Arkansas, Alabama didn't score a ton of points in the first half, um, the first, you know, quarter and a half, and then it just kind of broke, even though their defense broke too. But, like, I see that happening here. But I want Auburn fans to stop with this, we need to fire this coach and move to the next guy. He's not the right fit. It's not a good culture fit. All of this crap. Because they weren't saying this three weeks ago. And they don't understand how good Texas A&M's defense is and how that's a legitimately good team. They weren't saying this after they beat number 10 Ole Miss, right? So I think that Auburn fans need to understand that almost everything about the last three weeks has to do with what he was handed. And I will say, and Josh, I'll give you a little parting shot on this, like getting getting from where they are now to being a much better team next year is entirely possible with the same head coach and the same defensive coordinator, but maybe heavy on transfer portal and maybe a new offensive coordinator. And maybe you can touch on your thoughts on offensive coordinator um, and Bobo in the past and kind of what Auburn could do if they made some changes in in that. Yeah. I've always been a Bobo critic. I felt like, it's kind of funny. People talk about him being like passing when he shouldn't pass. It, the problem with him is it always seems like he's trying to establish balance for the sake of balance. And people are always unhappy with it because if something's working, he's not willing to go 60-40 one way or the other, be it pass or run. Um, but with Harson again, you know, I, there's always a lot of what have you done for me lately because I think the Mississippi State and the South Carolina losses are really bad and deserve a tremendous amount of criticism. 20-3 to to Texas A&M. Man, Texas A&M beat Alabama too. And that, that is a team that has been very up and down. But from a talent perspective, they are a lot better than their record. Um, and that's a, it's tough when you lose to a team that shouldn't have the record that they have because you feel bad about it. But at the same time, you don't play a team's record. You play their quality. Uh, Penn State, similarly, that's a good team. And I know they've fallen down the rankings. But that was a good team, a tough matchup. It was a close game. But they found a way to win LSU. They found a way to win Arkansas, who's a good team. They found a way to beat Ole Miss, who's a good team. And then I think that gives – got to give credit to Harson for that. Uh, and so, you know, there's been as much good as there has been bad with a limited roster. I think what they have is a lot of issues at different positions. They definitely need, need upgrades at receiver and the skill positions. Um, they need maybe some guys in the defensive line. I think the defense is more or less fine. Um but on the offensive side of the ball, they just they need to find some guys that can give them some explosive scoring potential. Depending on what happens with Knicks, they may need to find a quarterback too. But they might have one uh, in Davis sitting there in the wings. My concern with them is, yes, the offensive side of the ball. It's what I said early in the year that I don't know that Harson's offensive scheme is going to translate to this conference. I think you need to find more of an edge. He has never really fully embraced a modern RPO style offense. He's much more West coast, which is much more dependent on efficiency in the passing game and quality receiver play, which they don't have. I credit him tremendously for leaning into Knicks and they changed their whole offense mid season. I, I don't think people appreciate that. Like they, they leaned into Knicks's mobility and when he got hurt, it really kind of broke them because they put all their eggs in that basket. And it's hard to turn that around in one week. My concern for Auburn is Look, how is recruiting going to turn? Because the truth is they're really, you know, like going to finish probably between 12th and 14th in recruiting at this rate. Um, That's the thing with a loss class last year. You can maybe take one more year of that. But, man, if you take two more years of lost classes, you're in a serious hole that it would take a long time to come out of. 
And so my question is, one, can he turn around recruiting? And two, if he can't turn around recruiting, at least can he leave a lot of open slots and maybe you just go ham on the transfer portal? Because that might be the more important fix for Auburn. But it, it is interesting to see where they go. I've heard a lot of stuff about him not being a personality fit. I think he's actually a pretty good X's and O's coach it, that just kind of made the best he could out of a team that ran out of gas and ran out of players more than anything. I know there was a bad mistake in the South Carolina game, but you're you're nitpicking a game where you, you should have never been in that position because your roster should have won it more handily if you were a typical Auburn team. Um, but if he can't improve the roster, then none of the rest of this matters, and you, you're going to have to move on at coach. And that Ultimately, that's the real question with Brian Harson. All right, that's it for us on the Iron Bowl. Give us your score prediction in the comments. Auburn fans, let us know what you think about Harson. Um, and if you think he needs to make some changes, if so, give us those notes as well in the comments. Thanks so much, y'all. Enjoy a rivalry week. Y'all have a great week and God bless.